So Amsterdam, well, my first question to you, as I said to the Deputy Mayor of Paris, how did you get here today? Uh, today I got here by Metro, but and from Amsterdam we took the train. Right, how, how, do, how do you usually get to work? So your daily working commute, how do you, how, what do you do? Bike? Bike, yes, Bike. of course. Right. Everybody bikes in Amsterdam, or at least 60% of people of Amsterdam bike daily. So that's our main way of transport. Okay, so okay, let's jump straight into air quality. Now, different cities across Europe, challenges for every si single city perhaps. Amsterdam, how is Amsterdam dealing with that issue, the, the air quality in your city? It's, it's a huge problem and it's caused it's lots of health problems for, for Amsterdam people. And it's, um, I think the main thing what we do is to uh, make sure that the kind of mobility that we want in our city to uh, make, it, make it very easy for them and make it much more difficult for others. So we have bike lines, as, uh, bike lines as, as you know, we have a lot. But right now we're changing the places where cars go and bike lines. So we m the bike lines are always the red ones. As a tourist in Amsterdam, you have to remember that the bike lines are red. So you don't cross them because they're quite dangerous for people to cross them. So the bike lines are red and the car lines are gray. And we're changing that now and making all the lines red. And that means that everything is a bike line and the car is a guest. And as a really? guest... Really? So the car is a guest on the streets of Amsterdam? The car is right. a guest in the streets of Amsterdam. And I think when, when we launched it a few years ago, people said people won't deal with that. They, cars will go fast if the lane is big. But actually, by making the lane red, and by saying actually car is a guest and in the start of the street, they, they will do what, what is told. So they're, they're not allowed to drive faster than, than 30 kilometers an hour. And you have a large group of, pu of, of people and, and young people biking in the street and the cars behind it. So next to less pollution, you also have a safer city because the cars don't drive that fast. And actually, bikes have priority. Uh, we have it in the few main streets now in Amsterdam and we're expanding it and actually, it's my dream as a new politician and new in the government to have the full city as a bike lane where on some parts the cars are guests. Well, I, I need to jump, I, we need to delve into this a little bit further. So, a, 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 a car is a guest. So, drivers, how are they taking this to heart? Do they, do they see this as, a, as an issue? How, what's the conflict? Is there any conflict? I can imagine for drivers, for, for um, more mature drivers as well, this is quite a, a big change to get used to where you really have to, as I say, let, let the, 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 the cyclist be the guest on the road. Well, I think it's, it's quite easy for people to understand that if the city gets more and more dense, which is happening in Amsterdam, we're building more city, more well, it, it, there's more people, there's more uh, mobility going on, and if it's so dense, you have to share space. So you can't take a space for yourself, so you have to share it, and you have to adjust to the most vulnerable partic participants in the streets, which is the biker or the pedestrian. And um, I think for, for cars, if you see that that's the, the way that the street is being built, you adjust to that. Um, so it's, it's much about city planning, uh, that if you want to have a livable city, you can't have it full of cars driving too fast. I can also imagine it's quite a learning process as well. So for young people, they're getting used to that. That's quite an easy thing to, to get used to. For well, other drivers, maybe more difficult. W when I started, I said that 60% of the people in Amsterdam drive on a daily basis. So everybody who sits in a car is at one time also a cyclist or a pedestrian. And that's how we approach them and say, you're not only somebody in a car, you're also a pedestrian, you're also a cyclist, and you know how vulnerable you are if you are on, the, uh, on, on a bike or if you are on foot. So adjust to that. Um, and, and I think the next, wh what we're really trying to do is regulate a bit less, so have one lane for everybody, and then make sure that people can share space instead of having lanes for everybody, because then you see that it's always the car who has the biggest lane, because the car is the biggest. But if you have to share, it's not just by the government telling you how to behave, but the situation tells you how to behave. And the fact that you are part of 
uh, that you are a participant in this mobility in the, in the city. I love, the, I love the idea of, sh of literally sharing the space. Yeah, that's the idea. So, um, so yeah, so other cities would, would certainly benefit from taking that, that quote to heart. I think, sh I, I think when we started it, we were qu quite scared if it would work. And it's good to see that actually people behave in a um, sensible behavior if they have to think for themselves. And it's not traffic lights or it's not the specific lane that tells them what to do, but just to yeah, take care of each other. Um, and it's easier on a bike if, if, if on foot than if you're in your car to take care of each Absolutely. other. Absolutely. Okay, so in terms of banning car traffic, tell us what, the, what Amsterdam is, has been doing and, and kind of the plans for the future. Well, we, we, we make it less hospital for cars, uh, but we also have our specific zones in the city where we have uh, low uh, emission or no emission uh, zones in the city. So for one thing we, we banned is dirty scooters because they have a huge amount of air pollution. And also, especially if they're close to bikes, if you have all the pollution right into your nose, if you're waiting on a traffic light. So we're banning the very dirty scooters and we have several points where we, several areas in the city there you can only go if you have a very clean car or a clean scooter. Um, we're specifically, when we're talking about air pollution, we're looking at taxis that has to be either electric or other ways of very low admission. We're looking at the buses, our own buses, but also tourist buses. If they're, if they're dirty, they're not allowed in towns and in the town anymore. So we're, we're promoting healthy behavior uh, with zero emission, and we're making it very difficult for, uh, especially dirty cars, uh, to, to get into the city. And one of the big problems that we still have is around uh, distribution. Because we have big lorries, especially now everybody is, is ordering everything online. We have all the cars moving around uh, with the distribution. And I think that's something that I would like to learn from other cities, how they're dealing with the distribution. Right now we're thinking about hubs outside of the city where the big lorries are being put in smaller vehicles, electric vehicles, to go into town. But I think distribution is, is one of the most polluting and also annoying things in the city because we have small streets in Amsterdam. Uh, so that's still something that we're working on and I'm here to learn from other cities. Yeah, I'm just saying, you, the distribution is one of the things clearly you like to learn from, but any, any other highlights you'd like to, if you were to talk with, if you were sitting together with all the deputy mayors doing this, who do the same job as you, what kind of things would you like to walk away th today um, learning from them? Um, I'm very interested in the, in the mass solution and I, I would like to hear and, and just the CEO of, of WIMP walked out and I said I need to talk to you about the only thing that we still don't have is the metro and it's, it's good to learn what are the li little sometimes little things that you as a government can do to make an innovation easy to implement or difficult to implement and qu quite often it's not the big things. So I would like to hear how other cities are dealing with regulations that might, that we could call dirty regulations that are not meant to stop something, but in a way they stop good innovations. And how you deal with that and how you lobby your national government to get rid of regulations that actually um, hinder uh, new solutions like the mobility as a service. The, the government of Amsterdam, are they on your side? Is it, are they? you get a lot of support in terms of the things you want to do? From the national government? Yeah. Um, not always, no, they're, they're promoting Amsterdam very much as a cycling city, but when we're talking about really, really lowering the amount of cars on the streets, one of the big things that you can do is taxation, and they won't do it. You know, we know that the car lobby is so big and our government has their ears hanging around there, and I think that yesterday it was announced that the Dutch government is not able to produce a climate agreement this year. And one of the biggest things is because they won't go into taxation of, um, of cars, <coughs> of, of using your cars. So the only taxation that we have in Amsterdam is actually the, the parking tickets. But there is an amount of what you can do as a local city. We need our national government to, uh, to tax the, not only the um, uh, possession of cars, but also the kilometers that you, that you make. So 
Um, I think we can, we can be a such, so much cleaner and healthier city if we would have things like that. And as I said, we have to make the dirty uh, solution or the dirty ways of mobility more difficult and to, uh, to stimulate the, the cleaner ones. And by taxation, of course, you will make the right. dirty ones difficult. Okay, so if we jump into the future right now, I understand the, the, you, the, a project which you've been working on for quite a while, which is going in the right direction, the Harbour City. Can you share with us a little bit about, about what the Harbour City is all about? And, and uh Harbour City is a, is a whole new part of Amsterdam. And we, we, we have not started build it, build it yet, but the thing is that Amsterdam is growing. As any major city, we are growing, and we decided not to grow, not to spread, but to, to have a more dense city, which is also, which is difficult, but it's helping us also make solutions where cars uh, are no longer, because you cannot make such big lanes that you can have all the cars of all the people living in such a dense city. So it also helps us to create a new, not only area in Amsterdam, but ha half a new city where we actually will have not or very little parking spaces. And if you don't have parking spaces, people won't have a car. It's, it's quite easy. So we, we are creating a new city which is very dense, which is very a commune of people with a sharing economy. Because if you're living together on such a small place, the sharing economy, like the mass and other things, is much easier. So we're turning the harbor, which is a kind of a polluting industry into a new city area where um, circular economy is a way of living. So the sharing and circular economy will be the way of the Harbour City uh, is, is developing, the way we built it, but also the way it will function when it's there. So Amsterdam, if we, if we look at the past 30, 40 years, been doing it very well, sustainable mobility, thinking clearly about right now and also the future. But if I was to ask you maybe to just name a couple of cities that you feel are kind of leading the way, not just with Amsterdam, but maybe for the future as well, what, what kind of cities come to mind? Who's, who's, doing, it, who's doing it well? I think Copenhagen is a city that, uh, that, that we look up to because I think sustainab sustainability is really part of, of their genes and it's in everything. And right now in Amsterdam, what I'm, as, as, a, as a deputy mayor on sustainability, is trying to say sustainability is not just my little hobby. It's not the little thing for the Greens to do. It's something that should be incorporated in everything. And I think Copenhagen has that very much. So there's not a plan on whatever they're, they're doing, whether it's economy, whether it's mobility, whether it's education, that has not a sustainable element in it. And I think, that's, uh, I think that's, that's the way to go. And one of the things I have to say that we're always looking at Copenhagen because for a very long time we have been like the, 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 the capital of the world of cyclists. And I yeah. know Copenhagen is doing everything to challenge us, and they're almost there. So we have to keep on doing well, so this it's race. Really, so it's great having this uh, <laughs> another city as your competitor, really pushing both of you, both of oh, you yes. forward. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so to wrap up, coming towards the end of our conversation on stage, if again, if I was to ask you, you know, ten years time, where do you see what w what would Amsterdam look like in terms of? Uh, the mobility, in terms of sustainable mobility of a city, let's say in 10 years time? What do you think? I think, I think we will have a city where, uh, where we have very little cars, where we have a system where mobility is a service and not a possession. And I think that mobility will be, will be used in, in many ways, to, which is truly a, a ways of communication. So it's not only going from one place to the other, but it's really also when you're going from that one place to, to the other, you're walking or cycling or moving in a healthy city because it's not only about how you get there, but to use the places that are now being used for car parks as more green or more places where people can play. So mobility is part of your living and mobility is, um, is your daily life in a healthy environment with, um, so the way that you use your, uh, your mobility is also a way of being part of the city and being part of the community of the city. Marika, I think, I, I think you'll agree with me. When I'm sure when the other mayors get together and the conversations start to flow, it's going to be very intriguing and productive indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, 
please put your hands together for the Deputy Mayor of Amsterdam, Marika von Donik. Thank you so much. Thank All right, you. thanks.